We've learned about HSV's favorite pastime, which is causing oral and genital disease, but it can also do other things less commonly, and so let's run through those other things now. First of all, we explained herpes causes lesions by infecting epithelial cells, but there's lots of epithelium outside the oral cavity and the genital area, and sometimes herpes can infect that other epithelium. So as some examples, it can infect the fingers, in which case it's called herpes whitlow. It can be spread in close contact sports like wrestling to areas of the neck, face, and arms, which is called the herpes gladiatorum. And finally, it can cause a more extensive cutaneous eruption at a site that's already damaged by something like eczema and thus more susceptible, and we call that eczema herpeticum. There's one last condition of the skin that can be caused by herpes called erythema multiform. It's a rash that classically looks like this, like a target lesion. So it's clearly different from the other herpes lesions we've talked about because it's not vesicles or ulcers. So why is it so different? Well, it's because this is more of an immunologic condition triggered by herpes rather than a lesion caused by the virus itself. And actually, erythema multiform has many different causes, but HSV is the most common. So now let's move away from the skin. It turns out herpes can, on occasion, spread more widely. For one thing, it's actually the most common cause of viral encephalitis in the U.S. And we'll hear more about that in the encephalitis lesson. It can also infect just the meninges, causing meningitis, or both, in which case it's called meningoencephalitis. Now moving to an extension of the CNS, the eye, HSV can cause keratitis and retinitis. Keratitis means infection of the cornea, and retinitis is, of course, infection of the retina. And this retinitis can actually cause permanent vision loss. Finally, another extension of the CNS, HSV can also cause Bell's palsy, and that's an acute unilateral facial paralysis caused by interference with cranial nerve 7. And that looks like this. It's often temporary. Many things can cause it, but HSV, again, is probably the most common. We don't exactly know how it causes it, so we're not going to go into that. So we've talked about skin and CNS, but herpes can also cause more disseminated disease. It's uncommon, but it can happen in neonates, people with eczema, severely malnourished children, and it's also seen in patients with decreased cell-mediated immunity, like in advanced HIV or people on immunosuppression regimens. So in these cases, you can actually get viremia and then spread to visceral organs like the liver and the adrenals and also the brain and neonates. So let's go a little more in-depth regarding this neonatal infection. To be precise, the infection can actually occur in three different periods. Intrauterine, before birth, perinatal, during birth, or postnatal, after birth. Intrauterine infection is about 5% of cases, and that's when the fetus gets the infection in the uterus. And this is most likely to happen if mom gets a primary herpes infection during pregnancy. It can result in a lot of bad things, the details of which we won't elaborate here, but they do include fetal death. 85% of neonatal herpes occurs perinatally, and that's when the infant is exposed to HSV in mom's genital tract around the time of birth. Almost always, it's when the mom has a primary HSV2 infection. But remember that she doesn't actually have to have visible HSV lesions to be shedding the virus. And most cases actually occur in moms with no signs or symptoms. Finally, postnatal infection occurs when the infant is exposed after birth. Now, as far as symptoms of perinatal or postnatal transmission, the infant usually gets skin, eye, and mouth lesions and much less frequently they can actually get encephalitis or a disseminated disease, and that can be fatal or at least cause severe complications like mental retardation if the baby survives, even if antiviral treatment is given. So that's a quick review of all the things that HSV can do, and it's probably associated with other things we haven't mentioned here, but so far one thing it's not associated with is cancer, and it's not a cause of cervical cancer, so don't get it confused with HPV.